Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Michelle Davis Fitness. I should probably grab a mic. I'm so glad that you guys could join me today. Live in Las Vegas every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm here hanging out with you. Hey all my Facebook Live friends. I'm so good you guys, I'm so glad you guys could come and join me today. It's kind of hot here in Vegas and it's a little muggy at the same time, but it's gonna be pool season soon. So what better yet, you guys need to come on down here and hang out. It's gonna be awesome weather soon. Vegas has the Vegas Golden Knights. You guys, any hockey fans? Yes, gotta go to the T-Mobile Arena, check it out. But I wanted to talk about my competition. That's right, because this last Saturday, I competed in the Desert Classics, and I am so thrilled that I placed first in my class. I placed first overall. This is my, oh, this is my trophy. I'll try not to cut anything. It's really big. It's shiny. And Jean, better watch out. Or if anybody enters my house, they better watch out. Arr. I mean, what would you guys think if you got this as a trophy, right? What would you do with it? Well, it's near my fireplace and it just hangs out. And what better yet is, oh, shh, Nikes. Don't drop it, I have two of them. So there we go. Um, so I wanna give a big shout out to a whole bunch of people that made the Desert Classics possible. If you guys like that little video, it shows you snippets of my team, what it was like, the backstage a little bit. Um, but first and foremost, thank you to the Palms Casino. Thank you to Jay Cutler, the man. Um, thank you to Egg Whites International, all the vendor booths that were there. And all of my sponsors that helped me, who send me everything that gets me to where I need to be. Um, and most importantly, thank you to my trainer and my fitness family and the FitLaw fam um, and everybody there that just supports me, all of the teammates that put in the hard work, my makeup artist, Nicolina from Glam Sophisticated, Salela Suits, who made my suit. Um, I say um a lot, don't I? I do. Vicky Ross Fit, who supplied me with my jewelry and Eclipse Tanning. They did an amazing job. Tanning is a big deal. You have to do it the day before, the day of, you have to go back for touch-ups. It was an amazing show and it was beautiful and I loved it and every single year they're gonna have it. And again, I say and a lot. I wanna show you guys some pictures of me on stage. If you go to the MPC News Online, you can see the entire uh, competition all the competitors. So let's take a look at this picture real quick. So this is my final when you say thank you. Again, the suit. I, I love that color. It's burgundy suits, Salela suits. Uh, Sylvia, she's just amazing. They make them all by hand. And then the next one is my back pose. So my back pose is basically showing my my back, muscles, and I'm so glad that I went to figure. So big shout out to Joanne Haley, who gave me inspiration to do this. Thank you everyone for your thumbs up and your loves from Facebook. I so love that you guys are coming and hanging out with me. So my plan is, is that I'm gonna grow my legs and I'm gonna grow my back. And I'm going to be competing in July and in November for the rest of this year. My plan is to go pro, and I'm planning on competing for that in 2019. So I'll be going on a journey, sharing you guys with it all the way on my IG, on Michelle Davis Fitness, or 702 Rocks on IG, and on, in, on Facebook a little bit. I love to promote on my Strength Sisters page a lot on Facebook, but I'm always on Instagram. Don't ask me why. <laughs> So again, I have so many things that I want to talk about in the upcoming future, but I'm going to put on hold. Some of the things I'm going to talk about is meal planning, meal prepping, food and nutrition, and some of the secrets that you wouldn't know about certain foods, like superfoods that are pretty cool. I'm going to talk about a teammate, and every single week on Michelle Davis Fitness, I'm going to give a shout out to one of my teammates of Platinum Physiques who I feel needs a little bit of a shout out because there's so many teammates that work so hard just as I do and my coach trains 
every single one of them. Together we support each and every one of us. Together we are a team, a fitness family, and that's PlatinumPhysiques.com. If you guys want a free health evaluation, if you guys want a free health assessment, go to PlatinumPhysiques.com, call my trainer. We actually had a social mixer last night. Can we play that picture real quick? Thanks to Yvette Auger, Cosmopolitan Connections. I had my fitness family last night, and it was such a fun event. And David Lee was there. And I thought to myself, David has been such a supporter. He actually had to leave, so he's not in this picture. But David had to run to Eclipse, where he's a comedian. That's where I met David Lee, was at Bally's at LA Comedy Club. And he was so funny, I, I invited him on my radio show, 702 Rocks, back in 2013. I have a video of my very, very first radio interview ever. And that was with David Lee. And he filmed it, and I'm gonna play that for you. And I want you guys to take a look at me and David from way back when, this is Throwback Thursday, and I thought it'd be perfect to show you guys how we met, so take a look at this. So we have a funny guy in the house. Yes, we do. Comedian David Lee, how you doing? I'm doing great, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Welcome, David, good to have you on the 702 Rocks show. Thanks, this is awesome. So, David, where are you from? I'm originally from Hawaii. Um, uh, yeah, I, I moved and I moved here during the uh, winter oh, here in Las Vegas. And it's cold. Uh, it is cold. <laughs> you don't really have Comparative. winters in Hawaii. No, we don't. Oh. And and I'm Asian. I, I can't you're afford like any more shrinkage. You're like, what's this? <laughs> no. So do you have any kids? I do have a daughter. Uh, she's she's eight years old. And uh, oh man, she's so. So funny. I see the ring you married. Right? I am married, yeah, and uh, she's, uh, my, my wife, she just uh, got back from Afghanistan. Really? Yeah, and uh, it's crazy because uh, she likes to, she, I, when I first met her, she wasn't even in the army. And That's what I was going to ask, she's in the service? Yeah, she's, cool. she's in the army and... You like a woman in uniform. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so aside from comedy, what else do you do? Uh, I'm a full-time student at the Art Institute really? in Las Vegas. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Uh, it's one of those, well, I'm a film student and one of the things I'm really wanting to uh, do is produce uh, television shows, commercials, and there's this one commercial I really want to produce. I'm not sh uh, uh, it's, a, it's a holiday commercial, and maybe if you guys like it, um, I'll actually do it. Well, tell us about it. Well, it consists of a line from a song and then the greeting. So I'll do it right now. Okay, um, let's hear it. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you came. Happy Father's Day. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I like yeah. it. Can I yeah. say that radio? <laughs> oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. I was at the LA Comedy Club, which is at Bally's, and I heard you perform that. And man, I was on the floor laughing when, it, when you did that line. I was like, man, he can sing too. Listen to that. <laughs> Yeah, we, we love karaoke, you know. So what, what makes you want to go to UNLV as a full-time student and get more into filming and all that good stuff? Um, yeah, I just, I, well, I, I, I'm a comic and I just want to be able to produce my own uh, sitcoms and, and shows and movies. So, so what made you want to move to Vegas? I moved to Vegas because, because uh, well, my wife sent me here while she was in <laughs> Afghanistan. Did she ship you in a box and sent you over? <laughs> well. Yeah, pretty much, because she sent me to live with her parents uh, in Summerlin, and uh, that was a bad idea. Really? Yeah, they, they gave me a 1030 curfew. Oh, wow. Yeah. A 1030 a 10 curfew? 30 curfew. Who was your mentor? Uh, his name is Sean Felipe. He's a, okay. he's a national, national touring comedian. He's actually on the show, The Great American Food Truck Race, on, on um, the Food Network right now. Excellent. Yeah. Fine, I'll see him. And right. you're going to be at the Clarion tonight. I will be. Excuse me, so... All Again, right. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Cool. And if people want more information on you, your schedule, and uh, want to find out where you're performing, where can they go to do that? They can go to ComedianDavidLee.com. ComedianDavidLee.com. Are you on Facebook? Yes, I am. Twitter? Yes, I am. Tumblr? YouTube? Yes, all of them. Uh, just look for David Lee Comedy. Just look for David Lee Comedy. Very good. Well, thanks very much, David Lee. We appreciate you uh, being here. This is the 702 Rock Show. Find us and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. See us on YouTube at 702 Rocks. Stick with us. We will be back right after these commercial messages. I love watching that video. Back in 2013, my very first show on radio, I was so freaking nervous. Thank you everyone on Facebook Live. Oh my God, David Lee, I know, right? 
like flash back. And the funny thing was we were both so nervous and it doesn't really seem like that in video. <laughs> well, what better yet, David Lee and I became really good friends. He was a part of Beach Body Fitness, I think, and he sold me some Shakeology, which was awesome because I had the best stinky, stinkiest farts that I could um, basically torture my better half with, which was great. But anyways, through down the line, we followed each other on Facebook, and when I met Michael Haley with Platinum Physiques and I started training and showing my videos and stuff, guess what? David Lee joined on he became a part of the fitness family he became a personal trainer himself and now he is training other people to become personal trainers he's done competitions and we're going to be competing together in november at the stephen carr classics which is going to be so exciting but i want to talk about spirituality and i want to talk about religion and god with fitness because David Lee, he graduated from UNLV and he furthered his career in being a videographer, following his dreams. And so he has a show called Faith in Vegas. He brought me on, he wanted to talk about my journey and my life and just everything in general. So this is kind of in depth. And one thing I wanna to mention to you is I seem kind of down, I seem kind of sad, which I'm not laughing a lot. And I want to tell the reason why is because it was only three and a half months before my sister died and I was really stressed out and I was trying to stay my best and stay focused and be positive. But I could just, you can just see it on my face. And I love the fact that David took the time and he took his heart to film how my life is and how my journey is going and what things, um, what things have I learned to help others. So anyways, I love this video, very impactful. Hey Bill, how you doing? Hey everybody from Facebook, I love you guys so much. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And even better yet, the weekend's coming up, right? So watch this video, talks about faith in Vegas with my fitness journey, and enjoy. Welcome to Faith in Vegas, presented by KEEN TV 17, a program to inspire and inform our viewers about the unique community in which we live. Hey everybody, and welcome to Faith in Vegas. I'm your host, David Lee. I hope you're having an amazing day and a great one the way that God intended. Today's guest, we have someone that's not a stranger to our network. In fact, she's been on our show several times. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Michelle Davis. Thank you, David. Michelle. Yes. Michelle, I mentioned some of the shows. Uh, I mentioned that you, you've been on other shows, mm -hmm. and I know you, you, you host your own show. Yep. Um, tell me exactly why you, like, what got you started and why, why you did it. What got me started in broadcasting? <clears throat> Freedom of speech, right? Being able yeah. to say what you yeah. want, when you want, at any time. It's the best thing ever, and to get paid for it, too. Oh, that's awesome. I know. So uh, voiceover acting is definitely a passion of mine as well. Mm -hmm. And so radio and voiceover acting and now television has now, uh, I have an online live streaming television show yeah. called Geeks Are Sexy every week. Yes, yes. I've actually been yes. on that show. And so I got to ask you, um, Geeks Are Sexy. That's an interesting Geeks, title. Geeks Are Sexy. Why? Well, I'll tell you what, when nerds came out back in the 90s, it yeah. was like everybody loved them, everybody wanted to be them, but um, I think some people kept it hidden inside them. And I think some people, like uh, many of us, um, have confidence issues or get bullied in life. And so one thing that I see is when someone is super passionate about something and they're really, really into it, whether it's their job or a hobby or something that gets them going. Yeah, I think that is so inspiring. In a in a sense, it's kind of sexy. It's confidence. It's, yeah, it's really showing their superpower. And so I think everyone has a superpower, especially geeks, which are sexy to me. They yeah. have many superpowers. Yeah, and, and yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. I noticed that your guests are they're they're entrepreneurs. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that shows to me that there's some kind of underlying message. Um, in within your show, uh, what what uh, what is the message you're, that you're hoping to get to your audience? The message that I'm hoping to get to my audience is 
to tell the message and the story that someone is trying to portray, whether it's they overcame some kind of obstacle in their life and they triumphed through it and mm -hmm. they uh, created something out of that. Um, I always like to talk about um, new mediums and platforms for business that a lot of people aren't afraid to talk about and they're geared on that and a lot of the millennials are geared on that. Yeah. And so a lot of people find um, social media or entrepreneurship kind of scary or leery like I don't want that but on the other end of the spectrum a lot of people are intrigued about that they want to know how did someone like that get started what motivated them um, what what inspired them what what triumphs did they go through what obstacles did they overcome and what lessons do they have to teach people about mm. that in the end so speaking of obstacles, what yeah. are some of the obstacles that you went through when, when, when uh, coming up coming up with this show the concept and the overall? Oh, okay. Well, some of the obstacles that I overcame um, with my broadcasting was trying to find um, the the demographics and the audience that I fell under. I started out as a photojournalist writing for Vegas Rocks magazine, and I wrote for fashion. And there wasn't much rock and roll fashion chat going on. There was lots of stuff about uh, music and where people are performing and the guitars and so forth and the equipment, but not everyone was talking about the hairstyles or the trends that were going on or yeah. where people like to shop. And so from there I created that into a radio show, which I called 702 Rocks. Mm -hmm. And I found that I wanted to gear it more towards social media, towards technology, and for social media for entrepreneurs to kind of talk more of what's trending in that area because that's what I geek out on. Yeah. I love fashion. I definitely love rock and roll. Um, and I, I'm so um, intrigued about all the different things that Vegas has to offer within that genre. But I felt like Geeks Are, Geeks Are Sexy was a new medium for me to take off where people can actually see who Michelle was besides the fashion and the rock and roll and to be able to say oh wow she actually loves all of these things and I had no idea that yeah I was into that so um, entrepreneurship is something I, I am very passionate about and anyone who's a go-getter and has a dream and a goal to make something happen I don't care if it's uh, underwater basket weaving or wanting to do a project on a canvas or a photo project everybody has goals and mm. everyone has desires and everyone has a message that they want to share to someone, especially on social media. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I remember, okay, earlier, like a couple minutes ago, you mentioned uh, struggles that other people have faced mm -hmm. and bullying. Now, is bullying something that you faced? Oh, definitely. I was bullied as a kid. I was a band geek. I played the clarinet. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there was, I honestly think a lot of people are either bullied or they were the bully. And, um, and for me, I wanted to kind of get across that, hey, I have a show that's an anti-bully show. Anyone can come on and we're not going to get nasty or talk about anything that people find harsh to listen to. I wanted it to be easy and carefree yeah. and something that is so nonchalant that anyone with a fear of being on television could come on and put on the um, persona of a geek wearing the geek glasses yeah, yeah. and have a good time. And that to me is the best part about what I do. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know what, uh, Michelle, stay mm -hmm. right here. Uh, we're going to be right back because I, I really want to hear more about your uh, uh, the things that you've been through in life as okay. well as your spiritual journey. Okay. Cool. Yeah. We'll be right back. And welcome back. We're still here with Michelle Davis. We were talking about her show, Geeks Are Sexy. Now, Michelle, I want to kind of like switch gears a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, maybe talk about your faith journey. Okay. Uh, what, what, where do you come from as far as? Oh, I was brought up a Christian and I went to the Church of the Nazarene. And um, even as a young age, went to Sunday school every Sunday. And then, of course, uh, went to further studies and went to caravan studies on Wednesday, and that was nice. Um, so yeah, throughout my childhood, went to church and uh, loved God. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your meditation time like, your prayer time? Describe your process. Hmm. My prayer time is I wake up and I love to watch the sunrise and I do yoga 
And I start with a meditation of positive affirmations. Um, definitely five things that I'm grateful for. And I like to talk about things to myself like um, I'm healthy and conquering disease, I'm successful and appreciated at work. Um, the list goes on and on from mm. I'm loving, I'm caring, I'm comforted. Um, so there's so many different things that I do um, in my morning and evening ritual that I like to uh, either awaken myself or unwind yeah. and kind of let, let God open up my heart and soul um, before the day actually begins. Awesome. Yeah. You know, they say that God calls to us in our highs and our joys mm -hmm. and whispers, us, whispers to us in our pain. Now, you went through some obstacles in your life oh, just yeah. recently. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Well, recently um, had an unplanned pregnancy that ended up being a miscarriage, and that was definitely a turning point in my life, wondering what this was about um, and just trying to allow God to um, be there for me in ways that somehow I feel, felt that I couldn't be there for myself. I'm not knowing how I would handle things and not knowing where my journey and my life in the future would take me. Um, not wanting to be too hard on myself and just kind of let go of, of being in control so much. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that's where um, having God to allow uh, my life to be more in of a centered direction rather than trying to take it in so many sharp turns and where I feel would be best yeah. in my life. Um, another is that my sister was diagnosed recently with stage four breast cancer. She's had, she's had cancer several times in her life, but this oh, one wow. was um, definitely yeah. a hard blow to her. And um, mm. she's still fighting for her life, even though it um, seems the immunotherapy and chemotherapy is working. Um, that was something that I definitely had to give my faith in God and allow him to do what he felt was right and the best intention for my sister. And there were so many struggles of selfishness and sadness and grief that I had never in my life ever felt before. Yeah, and elaborate on that. What exactly was going through your mind? Just thinking to myself, what would life be like without her? What would I be like without her? Um, what is it like to really have a sibling and to have a sister and to really, really appreciate that? And to some of the things, um, even to the extent of what are some things today and right now that I can do to make that better? And um, it wasn't so much worrying and trying to figure out what ifs, but being more of being prepared for the worst, uh, expecting the worst, but preparing for the best. Meaning that I didn't know the outcome and the circumstances, and even though I wanted to be positive, even though I wanted to be um, looking towards as far as this is going to be okay, in the back of my head I had no idea, and that was really scary. And so I made sure that every chance I got, I went and visited her. Yeah. I created tons of memories and found that my life was living not only for her, but through the faith of God as well. And this was going on at the same time? The same time it all happened, yeah. And um, a few months before that, I had put my dog to sleep. That's she had right. cancer. And so that happened in May. I had the miscarriage in June and found out in July my sister had cancer. So it was one blow after another after another that I finally am recuperating from. And um, I, I really trust and have faith in so many ways with God because he's been there for me in the highs and the lows yeah. of my life. And there's so many things to be faith to be thankful for. And there's so many times where I wondered why me? Why is this happening? Um, you know, do I deserve this or any of that circumstances? And I knew, you know, one way or another, everyone goes through tribulations in their life. Yeah. Everybody has um, circumstances and, and, and people pass away and, and loved ones pass away and things happen. And to me, I was thinking, this happens to everybody. But in my circumstance, how can I turn to God to make this a little more easier for myself? 
Because on one end of the spectrum, like I said, everybody, one way or another, we never leave on this earth uh, alive. Yeah. We all pass away. Yeah. And so to me, I, I really looked at how much to be grateful for to what I have already in my life. Man, so like you're going through all of this mm -hmm. all at the same time. That kind of puts you in a place where you either want to give up or just die trying to, to get through it. Yeah. And, 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 and like for me personally, I, I'm a walking prayer. Mm -hmm. Like everywhere I go, I'm always like saying in my head, Lord, Lord, please get me through this traffic. You know, please get get me to the gym on time. I don't know why that's a priority in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that's the second prayer in my life. Get me to the gym. But um, everyone has their methods of meditation or mm -hmm. prayer. They have their war room. What is yours? Um, I'd say my war room is definitely my gym, the gym. Mm -hmm. Letting out all that exertion, um, letting out all that aggression when I have a a big set that I'm trying to overcome or when I'm lifting a lot of weights, I think of my sister. I think about um, hugging her and saying it's gonna be okay and being in that mentality. And what was the other? No, I think the that- The war room? That, yeah, the war room. Yeah, okay. The, and you answered it. It's the gym. Yeah, and I would say like uh, a place where I feel at peace Yeah. and where I feel like I can pray is not only of course the church, um, but going to a yoga class, to me, um, being able to stand still and be in poses where I feel like I can let go and let my mind go mm -hmm. and open up my body and um, just release stress is to me um, a great way of exertion that I can just relax yeah. and meditate and um, yeah, just kind of go with the flow in life. That's interesting. Yeah. You mentioned yoga and having to be still because what comes to mind is 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 this passage I heard where it says, um, "Be still and know that I am here." Mm -hmm. And uh, so, how do you feel afterwards? After yoga? After yoga? Oh, after wow. your, yeah. After the gym? I feel changed. I feel um, I feel deepened. I feel um, not so chaotic. I feel like the monkey mind has been able to uh, be still. Mm -hmm. And you know, usually when I'm stressed out or chaos is going on in my life, I tend to run around and run amok and do all these errands to keep myself busy, to yeah. occupy my mind. And one thing I find that's invigorating is when you actually face the demon and you stand still and you think about exactly what you don't want to think about. So you get it off your chest and you let it go. Because a lot of the times I find in yoga, sometimes I feel like I want to cry and I don't know why. Yeah. And it's like, don't run away from that. Don't hide from it. Just let it go and let it be and, and be in that moment. And for that one second, it feels um, comforting, nourishing, like I'm actually paying attention to my intuition and I'm guiding myself through all the balances of my senses mm. and my chakras that I need to either uh, open up or close off. And, and that is very deepening in spirituality to me. Wow. Yeah, pretty deep, huh? Very deep. Yeah. <laughs> I was not expecting that. But you know what? I want to hear more. Guys, we'll be right back. Hey everybody, we're still here, we're back. Thank you for sticking around. Um, Michelle, you were talking about the war room, your place of meditation, uh, you know, and you mentioned the gym. Mm -hmm. That is something I can relate to. Yes. And, uh, and it, it's something about, it, it, it renews your spirit as well as your, and, as, and, and on the physical side, um, it also, your body releases endorphins. Absolutely. Making you feel like, whoa, we call it runner's high, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Like, what is it for you after, you know, like, when it happens? Hmm. Af after the workout, what happens? Yeah, what happens for you, like, like physically when, when you're, when, when you don't notice, the, when you notice the yeah. worries are going away? Um, I notice that I'm capable of doing so much more with my day. Not only um, is, do I have more clarity, but um, I have more energy. And I find that after I've exerted 
all of the energy and my mind is clear and focused, I don't have any other room in my head for drama or stress or, yeah. and I find that um, to be so unusual because I'm a female. Um, so, you know, sometimes I'm like, ah, and sometimes I'm like, ah, you know, but it's yeah. like when I work out, I find it, it's like I'm a little more on the softer side. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> And you, and you, you know, like, the, like the Bible, what the Bible says about exercise in Romans twelve one, mm -hmm. talks about how your body is is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, taking care of it is actually a, a service of worship to God. Mm -hmm. Now, um, going back to your sister, uh, you mentioned things are things are uh, starting to progress. Things are getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, what what has happened you, to you since? Um, I have found that. I'm able to have more endurance. Um, I found that during the times of not knowing how my sister's health would be, I was kind of on a regiment of, okay, let's just do this workout. Let's just get it over with and, and then let's go on with our day. But now that I know that um, her health is improving and that I feel strongly about her going into remission, I kind of have a little more uh, bounce of energy to me and I'm able to kind of be a little more stronger um, because I've been so strong for her that I now feel I'm more stronger now within myself because of that. Yeah. Which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I, I have um, some more seriousness. Yeah more bang to my buck when it comes to pulling up more reps or yeah yeah more on fire for my workout now you know what's interesting also is that uh uh you and i share the same trainer and uh michael haley Ooh, michael. yeah yay. yeah he's he's been on the show too he's been on the show very god-loving man and he, he kind of looks like a god <laughs> i'm sure he'd love to bam him. yeah he's, michael haley he's, he's huge yes. Yeah, he, I guess that's why I, I, I follow the program to a T because he's huge. Yeah. He's a bodyguard. You don't want to make that guy mad. Yeah, I don't want to make his day. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's crazy. I mentioned him because uh, I, I know that God puts people in our lives for a reason. And uh, how, has, how has his style of training benefited from you? Wow, his style of training has benefited me to not be so hard on myself and to know that I can't get the results overnight. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, patience is a virtue and that you have to have steadfast dedication for a lifestyle like this. Um, again, it's not going to be easy and there's a lot of work that comes with it. Mm -hmm. But um, I think just allowing allowing yourself to be in the moment to get one day stronger and one day stronger instead of how can I get the fastest results as quickly as possible yeah. in the least amount of time. Um, that kind of mentality is a no-go. It makes no sense. Uh, been there before, done that. And for me, Michael has shown me to just allow myself to love myself, all yeah. honestly, for who I am and how I look. Um, but don't be afraid to want to try something new and to work hard for something different if you have a goal in mind. Yeah, and you know, I noticed that he, in, in a lot of his teachings on, on uh, social media, mm -hmm. he uh, includes the word and in, uh, in something encouraging from the Bible. It's almost like he's our workout pastor. I know. <laughs> yes, I definitely feel that in so many ways when... Um, when I can't do, when I feel like I can't do the reps, mm -hmm. he definitely gives me the push and encouragement. And um, some of his passages, um, he won't go all godly on me, but I definitely know he has like the right frame of mind in so many different perspectives yeah. to help me get through that set and to push forward to make my workout even better. Man. Yeah. So Michelle, uh, we're running out of time, but before we go, we are. I know. Before we go, I want people to know how, how to find you. Okay. Um, definitely find me on Facebook, Michelle Roxy Davis, or my um, Facebook fan page is Geeks, the letter R, Sexy. I'm on Instagram at 702-R-O-X, or Geeks R, the letter R, Sexy 2, and on Facebook at Foxy underscore Roxy underscore show. And my show is called Geeks, the letter R, Sexy. TV show every Friday, 4 to 5 p.m., live. 
uh, Pacific Standard Time on WCOBM.com. Wow. Yes. That's a lot. It's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Michelle, thank you for being on the thank show. You, David. Always have a, always a pleasure to have you on. Yeah. And thank you guys for watching the show. Thanks, guys. Michelle, David, aloha. Thanks for watching Faith in Vegas, a presentation of KEEN TV 17. We hope you've enjoyed today's program and we'd love to hear your comments and suggestions for the show. You can contact KEEN TV 17 at the address on the screen. 